got a story to tell. Can I, can I have your attention? <clears throat> hold up, hold up, where you going, little bro? Pay attention. What? Cause the course of the day, man, they all about lynch. Do you really want to brag about what you doing in the kitchen? Yep. We run around like little kids in school in the tent. Detention. And now we're grown and we're still stuck in the tent. Five served two. Man, I should've known my say don't play in the kitchen. I don't got another chance, so I dream again. Hello everyone, my name is Ben Graham. And I'm Tanya Swan. And, and this, this is, is our story. story. We're standing here at 376 Auburn Avenue at our convenience store and gift shop. And what's so special about this story and the store is the fact that we're standing on Auburn Avenue and this is the very street that I was homeless on. I spent seven years homeless on Auburn Avenue and Fort Street. I actually slept under the bridge at Auburn Avenue and Fort Street. And uh, for years I struggled with addiction and mental illness. And uh, I reached a point in my life where I reached out for the help. I actually was forced to go through a program. But by that time I was ready to, for a change. I was ready to live life to the fullest. I knew life had to be more than what I was struggling with. So by the time I was forced to go through a program, I was ready for that treatment and uh, my life turned around completely. I went through the program and I learned to change my way of thinking and I uh, reached out for even more help. And as I went through, I decided to see a change in my life and at that point, I just took off uh, with determination and hard work. And eventually that led to where we're standing now. And it's been such a pleasure taking this venture with Ben. We've uh, been, been here for about a year now, and we've had the pleasure of ministering to many people that's homeless and dealing with addiction and met some great people in the neighborhood. Um, Ben's struggle um, and his honesty and openness is what I fell in love with. Um, when I first met him um, after 24 years, um, he was very open and honest about everything that he went through, and his uh, dedication and hard work on that yellow bike riding around um, came right in with my ability to work in business and together we were able to pull off the, this great adventure of Auburn Avenue Specialties and Gifts. And the results of that, as you can see, the same street I slept on, we now have your business on. And I just want to live, I want to encourage everybody out there watching that life is not over, you can right. live your dreams. If you wanna live your dreams, gotta stay down and come up. Be my man. is one of the most influential ways uh, or one of the ways people are influenced. People love music. I grew up with music. Uh, I think as early as three if I was dancing to a song I tie a yellow ribbon around the oak tree. Uh, I love music. It's in our family. It's a part of our family. Uh, and I found it uh, uh, enjoyable and important to use music to influence other people, to inspire people, to tell my story and at the same time giving people uh, entertainment and something that you know to vibe to listen to and also to grow to. Yeah, this is a lot of, uh, basically I pretty much supported myself while, even while homeless. I designed a bike. I used to have this stuff in a wheelchair. I used to have a cooler that sat in a wheelchair. If I mentioned earlier, I was working on a garbage truck and the guy backed me into a dump truck, put me in a wheelchair. After I recovered from that, I ended up putting a cooler in the wheelchair and putting snacks on top of that wheelchair. And I would walk around Atlanta and I would sell uh, bottled water and bags of chips. Uh, just to support myself while I was uh, in recovery. You know, basically I'd do good for a minute and then uh, something would happen and I would either relapse. I still struggle with addiction, uh, but for the most part, I sought to support myself through selling bottled water and snacks. And so I got an idea one day that it would sure be good to put this on a bike. And I designed a bike, I put a milk crate in the back and I put an insulated cooler inside that milk crate. And I had a couple of baskets on the front and I would put my chips on this bike and I would ride around town and, and sell snacks. 
even while sleeping under the bridge, this bike would stay with me. It would lean up against the column while I would lay down for the night and, and rest. But for the most part, the bike became yellow uh, after I recovered and, and started moving more towards recovery. The yellow represented the sunshine. I've always wanted to inspire other people. Uh, so I made the bike yellow to represent the sunshine. So what are we going to do now? Let's walk down to the bridge. What's funny is I used to uh, solicit window cleaning. One was one of my ways I supported myself. Uh, if it wasn't, if I wasn't riding on the bike selling snacks, I was walking around. I had a window cleaning. I knew how to clean windows. I would come and offer maybe uh, for five dollars. I would clean the windows inside and out. You know, had a contract with Subway, and I would clean their windows every Monday. But I was always uh, willing to work and be industrious uh, and to move forward. If you walk down, this is Robinson Realty. She actually owns the building and gave us a chance to open the gift shop. Very nice lady. Used to be apartments all back up through here. Uh, Fort Street had apartments and that's pretty much where I was uh, spending a lot of my time. Uh, if you look back through there, it's, it's Fort Street. They tore the apartments down. Georgia State bought that field. They're gonna make it, I think, a soccer field or something of that sort. Uh, but it used to be apartments all back through here. Now there's a garden here. And uh, Georgia State has that other part, and they're going to do some things with it. Clean windows here. This is another place I clean windows. Most of the businesses on Auburn knew me and knew the journey. I was always asking for work. You know, I was uh, even, you know, fighting homelessness and addiction and mental illness. I've always had that a willingness to work you know, or a good heart about myself. I did not, not want to do anything wrong. And I always was willing to work, clean up, clean windows, or do whatever it takes to support myself. I'm gonna walk down a little further. How you doing? Oh, uh, we walked past Wheat Street Baptist Church. I wanted to give special thanks to them. I spoke at the, uh, they have a program where they feed on Monday and Wednesdays. They normally would feed the uh, the homeless. And uh, they invited me to come speak a couple times. I'm going to speak in, uh, in a few weeks there. Uh, and so I was able to inspire people through speaking. But I also wanted to thank them. I went back to thank them, actually, uh, and told them they fed me plenty of times. And, and now I had a store right across the street from that very church. And so since then, I've been going in a couple weeks and speaking at the church. This is more or less the block. I, everybody knows me on this block here. I, they knew it. I was always riding around with the bike. Before I had the bike, I had the wheelchair, as I mentioned before. Uh, this would be one of my stops at the meetings. I would stop here and, and sell water and snacks. They were very supportive, uh, as usual. Right now, we're coming up on the bridge where I slept, on Albany and Fort Street. Uh, the streetcar's house there now. And if you look up at that, right before the uh, column, right before the uh, Edgewood Street, is where I had my bike and the blankets and that uh, was my spot. A lot of people call them cat holes. They're basically parking spaces. You know, we would get a few blankets, lay down that parking space, and each person had each person had their parking space. Four words for life. <laughs> Four words for life, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, good to see you. Bye. Well, this brings back a lot of memories. Um, I, excuse me, I'm sorry. It sorry. becomes a little emotional. Um, I spent a lot of time in this park. Sleep on the bridge, sleep on the benches. Um, it's quite a journey. And that's really exactly, if you look over here, it's where I actually slept. If you look up at that column there. Streetcar has a maintenance facility here. Step up at the second column. The Atlanta streetcar pretty much built a facility here. It was just basically a parking parking uh, space under the bridge. Uh, not many cars parked there, so we pretty much utilized the parking space and everybody camped out under the bridge. Uh, kind of as I walk back here today, it kind of brings back a few emotions. Um, 
but as you can see, Auburn Avenue is changing. And uh, as far as people that are homeless, I guess we're kind of just, uh, well, they're kind of being pushed um, either in other corners of the city. And uh, one of my main goals is to uh, share this story as well as uh, create a movement that will help people that are homeless and struggling with addiction and mental illness. Uh, like I said before, I want to motivate people forward. I want to show them that you can turn your life around. We look under the bridge, down the street, 4th Street. Brings back a lot of memories, some good, some bad, uh, but mostly emotional because I'm no longer suffering from homelessness or mental illness. Hey, hey how you doing? Fine. How are you? Good, good to see you. you. I know Vern. Vern is, yes. Vern is one of the people I mentioned, you know, as myself, who struggled over there and, uh, under the bridge. And yes, she knows me now and, and comes to the store from time to time. From all the way back under that bridge, this man right here, me and him, we were turmoil. He was on the dope, like I was on the dope, still on the dope. <laughs> and uh, Ben came from the bottom to the top for real. Now he's established, he has his own little store, he gives back to the community, he still helps all of us. And we are still his friend, and we are so proud of him from the days when we were living in Fourth Street apartments together, working and staying in the dope man house, he got out of here. And I hope one day I get out of here. This man right here, he's a blessing. Thank you very much for letting me talk. <laughs> I love you. You're gonna be all right, okay? Always look out you know for us. No Always <laughs> You're gonna be okay. Hey man, what's going on? Man? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Good to see you, man. So what you up to? What's this all about? Not too much, man. We're just walking around. I was telling people my story yeah. of uh, from coming from sleeping under the bridge to owning a store on the same street, man. And some of the people that supported me in my journey, right. we were kind of pointing that out. And I yeah. saw your shop open down here, and I wanted to come in and say hello, thank yeah. you, and I love you. Hey, man, no and, problem. Uh, I remember, <laughs> and I respect you so much. My son has maximum respect for you. <laughs> thank he you. really does. Thank yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's no problem, man. That's what we do. We're all soldiers. Right. You know, there was no difference between you at where you are and me where I was doing what I do because you never know when the roles are going to be switched. So you treat everybody the same. Wow. I don't care if it's a king or a peasant. You get the same receipt. So I'm not going to talk to you then any different than I'm talking to you now. I talk to you the same way. Exactly. You could have been a business owner right there, and that's the respect that I gave you. So it's no problem, man. That's what I was pointing out. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing on the journey is that even with the midst of what I was going through, uh, as I did jobs for people, it was always one business person to another. And even I think I've treated myself worse than anybody else uh, because I got respect from everybody that I dealt with. So come on in, dude. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Yeah, this is where the jazz happens, right? Oh, right. Yeah. You're at WEID Radio Live Studios, home of the original, first black-owned and operated radio station in North America, WERD. As a matter of fact, that's where the term came from. Word, word up. It came from WERD in the 1940s. Wow. 1949 and 1968. So we celebrate the legacy of WERD with uh, this uh, small collection of vinyl music you have right here. And this is where we do all the jazz twice a month. Awesome. As I look back at that journey, I'm, off, I'm often emotional uh, because it was such a, uh, a hard journey and I'm very grateful at where I'm at today. Uh, you know, there were some ups and downs. At, at even one point in my life, I even tried to uh, commit suicide. And I was housed at the Cap Crisis for 30 days or so, and I was ended up being treated for a uh, major depressive disorder. Uh, there was a lot of things that took place. I mean, even during my time, I was uh, working on a garbage truck. I was backed into a dump truck and crushed from the wayside at the pelvis. I was put in a wheelchair. I had to uh, recover from that. So this journey has been quite a difficult one, but uh, I am totally grateful at the point I'm at now. Actually being on Auburn Avenue, uh, home of Martin Luther King, uh, we're talking about the dream. And we're talking about uh, a dream now that I have of uplifting uh, the community, uplifting people in the community, and as well as the people you, you mentioned about being in the street with. Uh, as they come in the store, uh, 
every one of them are, are inspired and encouraged. And uh, you know, I also went to school for counseling, so I'm able to to uh, help inspire and encourage as well. Excited, I'm, I'm grateful and the people that uh, know me from the street, the same people I step under the bridge with, or some are still out here. Um, with different projects going on on Auburn Avenue, they've been pushed them further into a corner or other places, but I still see them from time to time and, um, and they're very encouraged and inspired. And I hope one day to create a program or project that will um, motivate them forward. I have a vision to create one of the world's best shelters one day. Benjamin Graham, Homeless in America, Part 3. Thank you all for watching. Uh, before I go, I want to let you know that you can live your dreams. I am a living example as a homeless man that turned it all around, and now I'm living my dreams. Thank you. But when it going get tough, the tough get going. Things start growing and your life starts glowing, 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 glowing. In other words, don't never give up. I done got another chance, so I dream again. Welcome to Homeless in America. This is part three of Homeless in America. We're going to take you through the streets of Atlanta. It's 2015, you know, and show you the homeless situation, what's going on down here in Atlanta. There's so many people homeless. Even given night, there's over 2,500 people sleeping outside and another 2,500 in shelters and all that from with kids and everything. So we're going to give you an outlook, you know, what's going on in the homeless situation right down here in Atlanta. Hey, and a lot of people right now, they got up and moving around right now, but we're going to show you how a lot of people sleeping right up under the bridges. But they get them up every morning. They wake them up around by 7 o'clock in the morning and tell them they got to be gone for the day. So we're going to show you a lot of their beds and their cots and stuff they got sleeping outside right here. So let me get a chance to show you all real quick. It's real tight out here. You know, that's how it is. And it's real cold. This morning, we woke up, it was like 18 degrees out here. This is where a lot of people sleep at right down here up on this bridge, you know, because they stop, you know, for the water to be coming down. And um, any given day and night, you see 100, 200 people laying out different rows and rows of people. A lot of them got their stuff standing outside. Look, look right here. Then right there, we just walk past a person that's still up, up under, you know, sleeping because he up under blankets and all that. But there's a lot of people coming down here and feed people. And uh, But the homeless situation is real, real, real tight here in Atlanta. Any given night, it's over 2,500 people sleeping outside in the cold and all that. There's a lot of people that come help them down here, but, hey, it's still in there not a lot of help, and the shelter's just overcrowded. So we're going to walk around the corner and get a chance to show you how a lot of people got their houses and everything. Because right now, a lot of people is gone right now because a lot of people is feeding them right now. See, the, check this out right here. Look. Look at this cardboard box right here. This is, this is somebody's house right here. Somebody's house. Right here on the cardboard right here. So um, that's the situation. The reason they got the cardboard, you know, to keep the, keep the wind off of them. You know, uh, a lot of people fell down on hard times. Anybody could be home. But one thing about it, hey, if your name ain't on that lease, you ain't paying no rent there, you stand with somebody, you in stand somebody basement, you homeless. It's a lot of people like, oh, well, I'm not on the street and everything. No, but your name on the lease, a person could tell you you got to leave any time, any given time. So let me show you back some stuff around the corner. So look at, look at how the box is in right here. This is a lot of people's houses right here. A family be sleeping right here. Right there. So you can see across the street, down around the corner. Let's take, it, take you around the corner real quick down here and you see a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff down here. And this side is one, in a lot of the major cities. One thing about Atlanta, Atlanta is, Georgia is the top six out of the top ten in the United States of homeless right here. Right here in Georgia, thousands of people. And veterans, it's a lot of veterans out here. Any given night, you see several hundred veterans out here. You know. And we need, we need help. We need a lot of help, you know, to help these people. So look at this right here. This is a lot of people sleeping quarters right here. You check out right here, look across the street. Down around the corner, hey, we right here in front of Grady Hospital, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, Grady Hospital. 
right in front of here, but a lot of homeless people, like, through the cold time and stuff like that, they go to places like the library to set around. You know, Atlanta got a new street cart now. A lot of people get on the street cart, ride around there until they can't ride no more and all that. And sometimes people just need a little bit of help, just a little extra help, and they can bounce back, you know. Because one thing about it, a lot of them born homeless. You know, it could just, you know, state of mind. Some people got, you know, post-mental stress. A lot of people just fell off and can't cope with it and all that. Just need that push to get back up, you know. And, you know, that's what we out here showing you how things is out here on the street right here. When it's cold and all that in the middle of winter time. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia. So you see a lot of blankets right here. People food. More and more blankets and a lot of stuff right here. A lot of wool blankets. Boxes across the street. Look, look across the street right there. You see the boxes right across the street right there. In January 2014, 578,000 people were homeless on a given night. We right here in front of Grady Hospital right here. You can see Grady right here. Grady Hospital. And everybody's sleeping all outside. Places, you know, stuff right here. Women got their clothes and stuff right here on the corner. Everything just setting out. It's cold, you know, you got bras, uh, purses, you know, everything's setting out right here. A lot of people looked, they get their medication. See, you see empty medication packs right here. So I don't know what kind of medication this was right here, but you know, people taking their medication right out in front of the hospital. And um, it's, it's, a terrible, it's a terrible situation, but every time you ride down 75, 85, coming into downtown, you ride across a bridge, it's a, gang of hundreds of people every night sleeping up under this bridge. Sleeping up on it. So uh, let's walk across the street right now. We're down here by the Curry Market too. And um, everybody used to stay on Arvin Avenue. That's where they used to hang out on Arvin Avenue a lot. But uh, since the train started coming through, you know, so they pushed everybody from Arvin Avenue. So a person had to go find different places to go stay at. So, and this is one of the spots right here to go stay at, you know. Don't forget, it's 20 some degrees out here right now and it's real, real cold, you know, real cold. So, hey, just look across the street right now. Anybody, anybody over there, you know, a gang of people out here sleeping right now in the cold. I want to talk to a couple of fellas and ladies right here. We down there had a homeless situation. The city can do better than this right here. Hey, check this out. When it gets so low, it's right like 26 degrees out here right now. I know it's real cold when I woke up this morning, it was like 17, 18 degrees. So the temperature wasn't going to get no farther than 30 some degrees as it is for the day. That's the top. So we down here right now, I'm going to interview and talk to a couple of peaceful people about, you know, the situation, what happened to lead to this. You know, anybody could fall off. It could happen to anybody. Anybody could be homeless. So ain't nobody can say, well, I can't be homeless. Yes, you can. Any kind of situation could happen. You know, everybody got different situations. So right now we can talk to one of the guys right here. And um, this is the situation down here. You know, one thing about it, everybody's spiritual. When I first walked up down here, everybody had their daily bread, their Bible and all that. So one thing about it, think, thank God every day, just making it through another day. You know, and um, so can I get your name? They call him Blind Man. Yeah, my, my name is Blind Man. Uh, situation is bad. A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that could seem read, have done has has uh, in, uh, took a took a a, 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 a toll on on us in a lot of different ways. We out here, you know, uh, going through situations from family to to all different things. You know, uh, being able to just do something real minor like uh, uh, wash your body. You know, we don't. You know, if we if we if we don't have places to do that. You know, and they don't, you know, they, they study sitting around people to throw us off the street and, you know, that that really actually actually likes it, you know. And, you know, they say it's part of their job, but, you know, it's, uh, I, would, I would hate to hate to have to have a job that, you know, when my kids ask me what I do and I say, hey, I go home, I, I, I go out and throw homeless people stuff away. You know, that's, you know, it's sad, you know, and it just, just, just could do better. And we already know the situation for, the situation is one of the reasons why come they let you know so many people be homeless. It's a business. It's a business to them, you know. And uh, that's a come a lot of churches, you know, when they when you go to get something to eat, you know, they want you to sign papers, you know, because it's a 
write-off. It's a tax write-off. You know, it's business to them. Yeah, what would you say to the government and the mayor? Because right now, the government and the mayor, they didn't want to control the city right here. So they can make things happen. So what you want to say to them? Kasim, Kasim, you're a joke. You're really a joke. You know, it is, it's a crying shame that, that, that the people that, that elected you, you know, and, and you, 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 you really turned your back on her. On us, you know, the ones that got you in there, you know. But if if we was out in Buckhead and all that, you know, you you'll be be you be crawling on our knees, trying to beg us to to, to take your money. But 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 when once you got in there, you just turned your back on us, and and and, and they just threw us out the drive. And yes, that's a shame. And I, I I I believe you 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 just a waste a waste of of of, of flesh. You know, because it's, it's not it's, it's not right. You just a waste of flesh, to 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 live, to get up every day knowing with knowing 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 you're doing what you're doing, and have no conscience. That's that's you're, you're a sad man, and 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 they they need to to get you out the office, and 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 I would hope to never never see you again. So what about the government? The governor, he's just doing his job. I can only say he only do his, he, he, he does his job. He's overall just as long as just long as no minarchy, no real real minarchy, he's quiet. You know, he's he's really in the background. But see, the reason come I said about Cassine Reed, because they use the sink Cassine Reed as a gopher, you know, to do all the bad and and see that, you know, I mean it takes a it takes a certain man to a certain a, a certain man to have no heart to, to to be to be in Kasim Reed's position, you know, and the government, the government, you know, just like I said, he he's he's just basically he, he basically just controlling of the state, you know, and we we need to, we get enough, enough people together. That that's when you know that's when you go from that point to the government. Right. But one thing about it, they do have a budget out here for homelessness. Period. They have a budget. We don't know where the money go at. A lot of people say some of the money go to uh, Peach and Pine sometimes. Then, they, you know, Peach and Pine is an organization, a homeless organization on Peach and Pine right here in the Atlanta, Georgia. Then we got a uh, Gateway down the street. A lot of people talks about Gateway, period, you know, how Gateway treat people and all that. Then a lot of workers out gate rate that the, imp the people that told us say, hey, every time stuff get donated to Gateway, it never make it to the people. It never make it to the people. They sit there and split the stuff up. All the new stuff come through Gateway. They say they never get it. The people when they go when they when they see when they see the funds and the clothes and all that new stuff, the the staff get it. The staff get it. I know that for a fact. The staff gets that, and they contribute all that good food and all that money and stuff and all them all the clothes among one another, and then. The, all the stuff that's, that nobody wants, that's what they give to the people. And that ain't right. No, that's, that's not right right here. But, you know, look, look at how we is. We, we sitting right down in front of Grady Hospital right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Like, every, like I was saying, every time you ride down 75, 85 over the bridge, hey, it's people down there. And some of the you know, people need your help and stuff like this. Sometimes a little bit of encouragement. But like we saying, it'd be great to put a building that you can just come in and take a shower, get something to eat, you know, get a little clothes and stuff like that. A lot of the stuff could be donated and stuff like that, you know, on the food. So it's a budget for that, you know. So um, we can sit here and talk to a couple other people because everybody got a different story, a different story, period. And um, how you doing now? What's your name? Shaq. 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 Okay, Shaq, tell me a little bit about your situation and where well, you from and all that. I'm from here, you know, but I've been homeless for about three or four months, you know, and uh, like I'm a little mental health, you know what I mean? But the shelters and stuff like that I have been to, through, they ain't, you know, it don't fit me because they so have so much stuff going on in, in them shelters that I'd rather just be out here you know, to I do better, mm -hmm. you know, and that's basically what it is, you know, thank you, you know. And it was thank, thanks for talking to you, but because uh, just like any anything, you know, like, like you just touched on the right thing, you know, what you was talking about, uh, you know, a mental problem or whatever, a person with a mental problem or whatever, they should have help for a person 
to go through places and stuff like that. And some people just need a little extra little help. You know, be like, hey, I got this job for you. That's that's a help. It ain't like you giving you the number. But a lot of these buildings and places, I agree what you said. A person do need a little help. You know, a lot of people out here got, you know, mental health, you know, um, mental problems, you know, a little bit of this, ADD, you know, mental issues. And, you know, just like a person got to address that. You know, I see a lot of older people out here like yourself, older women, 60, 75 years old out here in the streets, you know, nowhere to go, lost. And people just, you know, go about a day in life and all that. But it is a budget for that. So that's why we're talking right now to everybody, you know, to the mayor, the government, you know, we just need help. You know, we can set together, you know, come down here sometime and speak to somebody that's on the street. That's all you need to do, just come down and speak and ask them their questions, you know. Just like I just got to talk to a couple guys, you know, so, so intelligent and all that. You know, nothing wrong. Just kind of ask them and be like, hey, how can we help this situation out there? How can we get back on our feet? See, y'all should be able to come down here and do that, you know. A lot of these people elected y'all to be in office to do that. So, a little bit of everybody out here. Let me speak to my, another guy right here. What's your name? My name's Tony. How you doing, Tony? Well, I'm doing roughly well. Uh... Having a lot of issues, you know what I mean, for getting a job. Just came out of prison, you know what I mean. Uh, can't seem to get my check cut back on. I'm going through some changes about that there, you know. Then uh, every time I go somewhere hunting for a job, you know, there's a dose sh slammed in my face because I just got out, got too many felonies. That's what they tell me, you know what I mean. Uh, just nothing seemed to be working. I can't get no help if uh, I tried to go check in to uh, rehab, you know what I mean. They say I have to be clean. If that was the case, I might well just stop doing what I'm doing on my own, you know what I mean. I just, everywhere I go to try to get help, man, it just seems like I can't get it. You know what I mean? So this is the landing spot for me. You know what I mean? Until I can do better, until God bless me with a way to get out of this situation. See, one thing we need, a lot of people that's getting out of prison, they need to have places and stuff like that. You know, they need staffing service just for people that's getting out of prison that they can go to to get back on their feet. Because a lot of places you go to, you put on the paperwork that you're a felony, they ain't going to throw the paper right in the garbage can and, and keep it moving just like that. So they make it hard. They, when you're a felony, they don't want to get you no know, good job and all that because a person made a mistake in life. See, one thing about it, they give us felonies. Anybody else, they don't. They give a misdemeanor. So I know how hard it is out here, you know, to, to, to make it and all that. So I think it should be kind of programmed, a staffing service just for people in prison or a staffing home for people fell on their luck for homeless people. So I think it should be a staffing service like that. And a lot of these big companies, y'all get tax breaks on that, you know? So if y'all get a chance to see this and all that, think about the situation right there. So helping everybody out, cause hey, we as people, we get up in the morning, put our clothes on, we all thank God, we believe in the same God up there. That's the same God, you know? And hey, we can make things better. You just call helping people, you know? You feel good about doing things and all that, you know? So this is what we do, get a chance to come out here and, and do things sometime. You might not got no money or something to give a person, just a little bit of encouragement or something like that. It can take one thing, could change the whole situation, you know, because we still people and we God's people, you know. So helping hand, you know, you read your Bible every day, go to church on Sundays and stuff like that. Hey, help people. A lot of people be like, okay, I got to pay tithes to the church and all that. It's cool. You come down here and pay tithes. It's, a, it's the same way you can pay tithes, you know, and that's helping people out right there, you know. And I'm going to speak to the fellow right over here. I see he got his Bible right here. Got his Bible. He's laid back, chilling, you know. I see. I see right there. Well, you know, the word. Right. It ain't, it ain't the color. Hey, what, what's, it, what's inside of it? See, one thing about it, everybody down here is spiritual. I came down here. People got their Bible, their daily bread. Hey, that's God right there. So uh, get a chance, you know, talk to the world and, and tell, you know, what you want to hear, the mayor, the government. You know, the people that we elected, you know, around here. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm here, man. Uh, I like my brother right here, man. You know what? This is your man. You know, I'm homely. Like the check thing. They gave me, they gave me a check, right? right? Okay, but my background, you know, I can't get nowhere to stay. You know, I got to go to the room house, man. You know what a room house is? Yeah. A crack house. Huh? So I would never be, you know what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm catching problems trying to get somewhere off the street, man. Even though they give me a check. You know, because he ain't read, man. He like to see us out here where you at now, man. He's a brother who come out of the neighborhood. You understand? They ain't got no help for no brother. They ain't got no love for no brother. Serious, man. You know, government ain't about nothing, man. Like I said, if I do my way, I've been in prison, right? I right. messed up a long time ago. But they're going to wait 20 years on me? Will they keep holding this against me? I did my time for it? 
And, and you know what? And it should be a statute of limitation for people that's catching felonies and all that, that they can race it off their record, that they clear. A lot of people don't got the money to go get that clear. It just should fall off after so many times and all that. Because people want to hold that against you for the rest of your life because you made a mistake. You might, you might just happen to be with somebody and caught a case, you know, because we always plead guilty to stuff like that just to get out of jail. You know, that little bit right there. You know, like I said, you're right. You know, like I said, you do your time. 15 years, they give me $25. I won't do $25. Nothing. It's 15 years. Nothing. It don't add up. Huh? No, it you know, add up. and see all that down now. I was young, it got up, it's, on, it's on my back. You know, I can't get no high rise, I can't get no apartment, but they're going to go to background check. You know? So right now, I'm sitting on the street, man. It's cold out right here, man. I ain't trying to go to no room house. You know, I'm trying to stop doing drugs, man. You know, that's why I try to get this out. But you know, as long as you round that down, man, that's what you're going to do, man. You know what I mean? And one thing about drugs and all that, only God can judge us. I've been on drugs before. I've been a dope fiend. I've been homeless. I've been a penitentiary and all that, you know. And it was a struggle to get back. And every time I get a job and fill out an application, I'd be scared. Should I put up, I've been a felony or should I not? They're going to find out or what? So that part right there hunted me for years and years and years until I start doing what I'm doing now. So that's why as part of me. I had to try to get back and put the information out there, you know, letting people that know, hey, you know, the kids and all that, that could be you too. You know, a lot of people got their families and everything out there just didn't have enough money and all that. And a lot of people that's not on the street that's staying with somebody, they, they homeless too, you know, because your name is not on that lease. And um, you can't never think you better than nobody at all because we got to answer to the same person. The same person, we got to answer to them. So, hey, ain't nobody better than nobody and only God can judge us. Hey, man. I can go in all the rehabs I want to. You know what I mean? Long, long breathers right here. Ain't nothing gonna help me, man. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna go in there and be asking for about, what, three, four months and come right back and do the same thing. I don't need to go to no rehab. This man right here. <laughs> That's all I need, brother. Yes, it is. I'm through, brother. You know, I thank God every day for having a son like Jesus. Yeah. I'd like, I like one time for them to come out and, uh, and sleep with us, and stay with us on, on these cold nights, just to really see how it is, and, and, and to have one blanket, just one blanket in, 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 in that 12 degree weather, and really see, really get a chance to see how it is. And we go through this, we go through this 365 days. So from the, the elements, the elements are when it rains. What, what, what do you do when it rains? When, it, when you got to use the bathroom and your stomach upset, where would you go? Just think about things like that. Where would you go? If you don't have tissue paper, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Come, cause just come out here one time. I want the, 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 the people in, in office come out here and sleep with us. Sleep with us just one time. And to, uh, when, when it's, when it's, when it's 12 degrees outside just to really see how it, it is. To really know this and to really know the circumstances when it rain and the dew, the dew is falling all down there and there's nowhere to go. Only thing you can do is just stand up. Just stand up all night. To really see how it is. They just know what they see. They see nothing. Really they see nothing. The things the things the things that they see is, is, is not even 1% of what we go through, you know? And when the wind blowing, all the dust coming in our face, and, and we don't have, can't, can't even go and brush the teeth, and all these kind of the, the elements. They really, know, they really don't know. So, like I said, I'll just, I'd like, I'd like to just come with one time, just, just sleep with us. Just be out here. They literally don't care. You know what? You know what? And if one of us would die right now, they would say, oh, another person died. They, they, you know, they just like we just, we're, we're, you know, they, 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 treat their, their, they treat their pets better than they treat us out here. You know? And, and, we're not derelicts, you know. You know, we're human beings. You know, come and come and come and you can talk about us. They talk about us, but come and live us. 
can you live it? Have you lived it? You know? But every day, every day, every day when you when you leave your office, when they leave their offices, they going home to a roof of their head. You know when we leave our office, where we come to? The elements. And you, and you never know what the next day gonna be. Or what the element gonna be. Just like Monday, it's supposed to rain, it's supposed to snow. What we gonna do? We be right out here. We go to rain, snow, steep or hell, we still be out here. We don't have shelter. You know? Then you then you can't you can't walk on the or you can't stop on the on the sidewalk because they, they they call that uh blocking the sidewalk. All them different ploys, you know. And that's how come pre-trial and all of them got, you know, um, 90% of the money that, that they, it takes for them to pay for pre-trial comes to petty crimes. I mean, petty crimes. But murderers and this and that, they don't deal with that. They don't deal with that. But, you know, they make their money off of us. So that's the come they keep on giving all, all these different little ordinances and this and that for, you know, so they can have another way to put some money in Miss, Mr. Cassine Reed's pocket. And that's all he's really doing, you know? Because what, what he have done, I mean, you know, what he have done, oh, I, I, did, I, I did the trolley. The trolley? Who rides on the trolley? We do. Who paid for that? We did all that, you know what I'm saying? But once we have done, once we had paid for it, he turned it back on us. They should, they should put him on a five dollar bill and turn the head the opposite way because he turns it back on the people, on the people. So you saying they need to come out here? This is going out to all the politicians right here, the judges too, right here in Atlanta, the judges, you know, the mayor's office in the government office. Hey, come out here for two or three days and spend the night out here with no money on your pocket and you would know how it feel out here. You don't know how it feel, so it don't it ain't a big difference. So a lot of y'all be like, okay, we got all our money, we rich and stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about this being outside and stuff like that. Hey, come out here for a day and two and spend the, spend the night out here with no money and hey, Guess where you gotta use the bathroom? Ain't no bathroom. A lot of people don't even want you in their place when you know you ain't spending them. We just can't walk up in the store and you, they already got a sign on the door. If you ain't no customer, you can't use the bathroom and all that. A lot of people gotta use the bathroom. Some people might got diabetes, can't get to their medication and stuff like that, or bladder disorder and all that. So a lot of people gotta dip behind cars, go behind buildings just to use the bathroom, you know. Ain't no quarter potties out here and all that. So it could be places down here, you know. I'm just putting a suggestion out there to y'all. Y'all need some help. Hey, we could come with a plan and a budget to put that together. Hey, and stop a lot of this and slow it down, you know. That same building that they could come take showers in, eat and all that too, it could be a staffing service in that building too. And um, like the guy was saying right now, he tell any of y'all to come on out here and spend a night with us with no money and stuff like that. So, hey, let us know. I just, I just think it's about time, it's about time for, for this situation to stop. It don't make sense. It's not, it's no, it's, it's, it's nothing to be sensible about this. You know, and the, 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 the sad part about, it, you know, like, just like I said, you only can, you, you only know what you see. So if you come out here and be a part of it, then you'll know for yourself. And you'll, you'll really know how, 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 how it feels. How I feel to not to have, not to be cared about. You know, you're 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 just a a, a, a statistic, and that's sad. We're no statistic. You know, you can't use me. That's come you you they come to have sensors and this and that to know where people is, you know, certain ethnic groups and this and that. Because see, that's the only thing they they can base it on. See, you know, but you can't base it on that. Come out here. Come out here and be what we call a part of the elements. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you sitting there telling the truth and everything. You speak so just, so intelligent, you know. You letting the people know, the world know, the city know, hey, 
we just need a little help right there. Come out here and just speak to us and talk to us and see what we need and all that. It'll take them a few minutes. We just ride around the corner from the mayor's office and the government's office. You know, just ride around the corner and just come say a couple things. You know, come talk to us. That's all they ask. And, you know, come ask us, you know, what do we need? So thank y'all. This is part three of Homeless in America. It's like rough once you get started, but like once you get used to everything, you start learning the routine and everything. But it's still like, you know what I'm saying? You have to pick, you know, pick the perfect spot to go to. You just can't go to any spot because, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's different people, you know what I'm saying? Different people in different situations. So we like hang with the people that's, you know, dealing with our situation and stuff like that. So where did you, where, where did you sleep at last night? Um, I really slept outside. Well, I slept with a friend of mine because I didn't want to sleep up where I normally sleep, was in the back of the store up there, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like real drafty up there and it was dirty, they didn't clean up because it's closed today. So you know what I'm saying? I slept with a friend of mine, you know what I'm saying? Just a normal friend, just my friend, you know. Okay, so how old are you? I'm 35. Okay, because you look, you, look, you, look, you look young, you know, young, you know, but one thing about it, Anybody could fall into a situation and be homeless. So we just letting people know that out here, things can happen and all that. So don't look bad at us because a person out on the street and stuff like that, because that can happen to anybody. A lot of people think that can't happen to them. So what you want to say about that and uh, the situation, like with the mayors, the government, how, how would you like it? You know, you're trying to bounce back, you know, let them know it's rough out here. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm trying to get away from out here. This is why I've been on the street for three years. This is my first time being homeless. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking to do better, you know what I'm saying? And I wish, and like you said, I wish the government like could come in, you know what I'm saying, pitch in and help with that, you know what I'm saying? Instead of leaving us out here, expecting us to get up and, you know, get up on our own like that. But I'm, I mean, like, I got friends and stuff, and we like trying, and I'm, we, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of us trying to get away from out here. And, it, and there's over 2,500 people any given night here in Atlanta staying on the street. It's another 2,500 in the shelters, but hey, a lot of the people that never been out here spend the night outside, you know, hey, it's rough. It ain't, it ain't that easy, you know, you just can't wake up and go get a shower. Go get something to eat, go to your ice box and stuff like that. You got to use the bathroom. You got to go get some napkins. Like I was saying earlier, people ain't going to let you come in their bathroom. So we got to use the bathroom outside. So, hey, that's, that's hard, you know, being humiliated and stuff like that. And people walk past every day like it's a, it ain't no factor, you know, like, hey, that's your life, whatever. But, hey, things could be helped. Welcome to Homeless in America. We down here at Georgia State, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's on a cold day right here. Any given time, you see hundreds of people, people setting out. A lot of people come down here and feed people down here because, you know, a lot of people is homeless. They know the, the feeding spots around town, you know, just not a lot of spots to go take no showers and stuff like that, you know, and brush your teeth and use the bathroom. But a lot of individuals come down here and hand out bags and stuff like that. They help, you know, they help the homeless. They bring hot chocolate, little stuff like that, you know, but you get a chance right now and check them out you know everybody you know feeding them and and it's a, it's, a, it's a group over here right now passing out some sandwiches and everything we can walk right over here to the group right now and see what organization that they from so a lot of people appreciate what's what's going on to help people down here you know a lot of people just need a little extra help a little extra help you know so that's the reason why we putting this together to let people know that hey we need to come out here because people could fall off any, it can happen to anybody and the people sitting at home anybody could be homeless anything can happen any kind of situation from v veteran from post mental distress to anything the, the slightest thing you know you might have a job and still be homeless just not enough like that you know so we down here doing a little filming talking to a couple people and everything so you get a chance check us out a lot of people just want to talk to the mayor the government you know they want them to come out here and check it out to see how things is out here so this this is right here in the heart of downtown Atlanta if you get a chance just 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 look look around you know so it could be more help to people down here period so that's how we just extending your heart you know 
give a little bit, give a little back and everything, you know. So sit down and just come down and, you know, talk to people, see what some people's situations sometimes, you know, because it might just be a little conversation that you need to talk to them. But, hey, it can happen to anybody. Anybody could be homeless. We just leaving Hurt Park. You know, Hurt Park is in the middle of Georgia State University down here. There was a lot of people when we rode up on the scene, there was a lot of people, you know, people come in from different areas and come, you know, different churches and organizations and come, uh, you know, feed people. You know, they just had a lot of sack lunches and all that. We just come through there. And I'm on the way down right now to down to Peach and Pine right now. That's where we headed, down to Peach and Pine. So, you know, one thing about Peach and Pine, it's over 700 to 1,000 people every night there. Every night spending the night there, you know. And that's a, that's a homeless shelter. A lot of people you might see outside of Peach and Pine because they, they can't go inside no more, you know. Because whatever the behavior they did, you know, they can't have them inside no more. So we can head down there. But any given night, it's a lot of people sitting out there on Peach and Pine, you know. And there's over 700 people spending the night there daily every given night so we about to ride past there and give a chance to show you on a single night plus right here just in the united states period it's over 600,000 people 600,000 people staying out the side staying outside all around the country you know just you know people standing bend, bend this building trying to block the cold and places like that and georgia is the number one georgia is the number six state in the whole country, number six out of 50, got the worst is homeless, you know, problem, you know, and this is, this is a nice capital city, so you know, it's California, you know, Texas, New York, a lot of places like that, Florida, they got big homeless populations and stuff like that. And some people just need a little help. It's a lot of people with families and kids staying with other people, you know, that's homeless, you know. And they can't get the proper schooling because they, they moving around and stuff like that. No address, you know, the, the kids being out of school and getting discouraged, you know. A lot of stuff, you know, fall, you know, happen to the parents, you know, the kids got to pay for it. You know, a lot of people don't think about, you know, hey, the kids, you know. And a lot of parents don't like, you know, breaking up, moving their kid here, moving their kid there, staying over relative house and all that. While people talk about them. So they move around house to house, you know couch to couch, you know, and that affects the kids, you know, the middle stage and stuff like that, you know, being homeless, they got to go to school and look at the other kids and other kids sometimes make fun of them because they have to wear the same clothes. So that's, that's tight right there, you know, a situation for a parent falling off and stuff happened to them, that can affect the kid mind of thinking everything. So um, we take you through the streets of Atlanta Right now, hey, we right behind the trolley, you know. They got the new trolley right here in Atlanta, you know. That's the train right there. So once they did that train, a lot of people stayed on Arvin Avenue and stuff like that. They don't stay down on Arvin Avenue no more. So they ran them, you know, off to another spot. So that's what we about to show you right now. So here's the trolley right here. You probably see the trolley. And we down here on Peach Street, you know, Peach Street is one of the most famous streets here in Atlanta. You know, when you ever come to Atlanta, you know, everybody always got to come to Peach Street, you know, even though it's about 20 different Peach Streets right here in town, you know, and it's the main one right here downtown, the heart of downtown. We on the way to Six and Pine and take a look about the homeless situation right there. It's so right across from Emory Hospital, right there by the hospital right there, you know. Um, right across the street is the homeless shelter, you know, every given, even... Any given night, they got 700 to 1,000 people staying there. It's been very, very cold down here, you know. If you look outside, you see it's cold, you know. And um, I think the government and the mayor, we could do better. Hey, you got anything left on there? In, in Georgia itself, it's over 4,000 families, families all over that's homeless. Kids out of school, you know, on give, you know, a lot of young people, you know, every night is over a couple thousand people here in the state of Georgia, up under 18 years old, that's homeless, ran off, staying at other people's houses and all that.
So we just riding right down P Street, you know. The most famous street right here in the city, right here. Most famous street right here. And a lot of people, you know, see it was everything nice, fine, and dandy. This is the number one street right here. But hey, you make a little right turn on uh, P Street, you know, you'll see a lot of homeless people. Yeah, how we doing? We, we back down here on Peach and Pine right now. So a lady and her kids just came up right now. Just came up right now and, you know, out here passing out sandwiches and stuff just like that. And, hey, the good part about it, you see the kid out here doing a little helping and stuff like that. So we're going to walk in right now, a little exclusive. Peace. Come on in, y'all. So this is what the bathroom look like down here in Peach and Pine down here. We're in the bathroom right now. These are showers. You come right now and see how the shower's looking right now. You know, this is what people have to use every day. You know, ain't no toilet paper in here. And uh, hey, look at the showers right here. Stuff's dripping down. You know, hey, you know, um, it's so bad down here. I don't, I don't, you know, it should not be like this. You know, you know, a lot of these shelters and places need help, so we need to, you know, start helping out. Anybody can be homeless. Sometimes a person just need a little help, a little decent place. You know, the city got too many buildings around here that they can have showers and people can go and get a meal and all that and fill their paperwork and everything out that they need just being down here. And one thing about it, we love the kids out here. More people with their kids should go out and show people the situation because anything can happen. You know, this, this is a beautiful thing right here. And they even got God bless you on the bags, you know. You know, very spiritual, just like a lot of people was talking to today. Everybody had their Bible with them or they had their daily bread with them, you know. You know, because we, we all serve the same God, you know. So we just need a little help so we can't act like nobody better than each other because you got more money than each other. You know, money ain't going to get you into heaven. You know, it ain't going to get you in heaven at all. So every day, you know, thank God, get a chance to put on a robe and tell the story how we made it over. Thank y'all and welcome to Homeless in America. According to the 2014 homeless assessment, Georgia is ranked number seven in the country in homeless population.